Okay, boys and girls, this week, I hope you enjoyed learning about uh, weighing T-bone. Now, today, we're going to actually make our own cake project. You can see here one that I kind of worked on to practice. I made it look like the window um, is written reversed. Um, and um, so it says cake from the front. And this is looking inside of the bakery shop. And I even made one of those rainbow cakes. So you know how you have those? You could make, I've had students do this project before and do so many fun things like M&Ms falling out of the cake. They've had like surprise things. They've made a layered cake, kind of like a wedding cake or a giant birthday cake. You could do that as well. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make um, two different types of cakes today and then you can select which one you want to do. Okay, so here we go. Step one, I'm gonna make the basic one layer, one cake right here so you can get that idea with the cut in it, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to hold the paper going the tall way. And what you wanna do is you wanna make almost like a Pac-Man. So watch me if you even know what that is. I'm from the 80s, can you tell? All right, so I'm gonna make an oval here. See, but I have an opening, like a backwards letter C. I'm gonna make like a dot towards the center of the paper and that kind of helps of the circle. I'm gonna make a slant line out and a slant line out. That kind of helps me. Okay, you see how it looks like a Pac-Man? Okay, all right, so now enough of that, Mrs. V. All right, so look, I'm gonna make a slant line down and a slant line, a slant line down, a straight line down, a straight line down. I am so tired today. And I'm gonna to come to this point and make a line that matches it here and a line that matches it here. And then I'm gonna make a round um, curve line that matches the curve line from above. And the same thing here that matches it from above, just like this. See how I did that? So it's almost like the cake is curved, okay? Now in the center, there is a line that comes down, but you don't want the line to, to go as far because you wanna show how deep this cake is. So you're gonna make your line come down in the center, and then you can make a slant line out and a slant line out just like this, okay? You're drawing this with pencil, so it's gonna be so much easier than me drawing with Sharpie marker so you can see from far away. And then you can make the layers of the cake like I did if you wanted to. You could just do two layers if you want, but you could do more like I did. I even made more, it looks like more layers because I added color to it. So it's just simply like going in and then coming back out. All right, and it makes that line. You could also um, make details on your cake. I made drips on this one, but you don't have to do that. You could make straight lines. So, but again, it's gonna be matching that curve line above. So you match the curve line above and make your line down below to give it that round look. See how I'm doing that? Okay, so you could do something like this if you wanted to, to make details in between. You could actually do drips up at the top. Okay, if you're gonna make drips, then this line would be erased because it's like dripping over the edge. I can't do that because I use Sharpie marker. You can because you um, don't have a Sharpie marker You're using a regular pencil. All right, also boys and girls, if you wanted to make a plate, you wanna come down about half the way and make a curve line. Again, I'm drawing sideways, so this is a little bit tricky for me, but I'm doing my best here. All right, so there's my plate. You can make a stand for it like I did. So I have a circle that comes around and I made like a little um, decorative edge. And I just made a little stand, like two lines down and a little curve line at the bottom, okay? If you want to. I'm gonna keep this real simple, this one. I'm gonna give like a little edge to my um, plate or you know those cardboard things you can buy to put a wedding cake on or birthday cake. You can add details, you can add a candle. Like I could just add one giant candle in the middle, right? I could add some stripes to that. I could add a little flame here, right? Then when you go to add in the details, you can add them in. I suggest you adding them in with your oil pastels or crayons, okay? And you wanna be thinking about that color wheel, boys and girls. For example, if I wanted to make my frosting pink, but I and I wanted to add value, so I used pink and red to show the value of the shaded parts, okay? Also purple, because purple and red are next to each other on the color wheel. So I use those colors to kind of show the light, the medium, and the dark tones of my cake, okay? You could also use um, shades of green, but in this case, surprisingly, you would use dark green, light green, and yellow, because yellow would be like the, high, the lightest part. You could blend the yellow and the green together. Another option could be blue and purple, okay? It could be purple as the highlight, blue as the darker color. Okay, you could even blend it with white to give it that other highlighted look. So it's like a light purple. 
All right, so that's a lot of fun. You could also do that with crayons as well. All right, so to do that, you wanna go in and you wanna shade. So let's say I wanna do yellow, green, and dark green. Okay, so if I'm gonna do frosting like that, I need to go in and my darkest part of my cake is going to be down at the bottom. So I'm gonna add in a little shadow here, okay, towards the bottom of my cake, all right? And then I'm going to add in the medium tone going up the sides. So I'm gonna add a little dark along the sides. Now you could make this cake have different colored frosting. I'm just kind of making those stripes. You can kind of ignore them. But do you see how I'm adding in? I have the dark green, then I have a lighter green, and then I'm gonna do the highlight, which is yellow, right? Like a yellowy green, okay? To show it, give it that value look, okay? Same thing on the other side. I have dark green going up the edge, and I wanna go in the, in the shape that I'm drawing in. So I wanna go in, see how I'm shading inward? That's important with value too, okay? And I can go in with the medium tone of the light green, and then I can over go over the light green with yellow. See how I'm doing that? And it kind of gives it that illusion of value, okay? Same thing with the inside. If you're gonna do each color of the frosting different colors, right? If you're gonna do the rainbow one, um, you could do the red and then fade it into purple, right? And then go from there up the color wheel. So you could do red, purple, then you would do blue next, right? And blue would touch the green. And then from green, you would do, and just keep going, right? Yellow. And then do the same thing on the other side if you wanted to do the rainbow, okay? You could add in any kind of details you want in the background, all right? If you wanted to do a cake, that is multi-layered, I can show you how to do that very quickly. It's a simple thing, we'll make it a solid cake to keep it simple, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna start over at the bottom and you're gonna make an opening, but you're going to make a circle, just like this, okay? And then from there, you can make your line down on both sides and repeat the curved line at the bottom. See how I did that? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a line up and a line up and I'm gonna make a circle that connects, see, across like this, and then I can connect my line in, see, to show that this cake is sitting on top. Same thing, line up, line up, and an oval, and you connect the line together. You would erase that line, I can't because I use Sharpie, but you would erase that line. See how it's not there, and it's not there, you would erase that line so that it doesn't look see-through. And you could do one more layer up, Little line, little line, and an oval, and a curved line. Now you can add in all kinds of little details, droopy lines, you could do double slant lines, right? You could add any kind of details you want to using our pattern chart, which is right here. You could use any details you want to on the decoration of your cake. I put like little flowers on this one with candles, and then you could, again, could have fun adding color with either crayon or with um, watercolor paints, I mean, uh, oil pastels. And then once you've done that with the oil pastels, where did my cake go that I was using and showing you? Ah, it was just here. Here it is. You can go in and add watercolor paints, which we will go over in class, but at least you'll have kind of the background of it. Um, so you need a little bit of water. Okay, your brush, you wanna hold your brush down like this, pinch it at the bottom. That's where you have the most control. And you can actually go over crayon or watercolors um, with watercolors or oil pastels, you can go over them, okay? So what I can do is I can go in and I can just simply paint in my background. Remember, skip around as an artist so it doesn't bleed from one to another, okay? You could do some paint right over on top of the cake if you wanted to. So I could do my background in shades of blue. All right, think about that color wheel. We'll talk about it in class. So if I wanted to bleed from blue, the next color I could do is either ye yellows or greens, or I could go to purple. I'm gonna go to purple because it's wet and I can blend that color. See how I can blend that? Okay, and it looks very nice blending those colors. And I could go all the way up. See, I wanna hold it down here when I have to go into small areas. All right, but if you color that with color, with oil pastels first, you won't have to worry as much. You'll have more control because it will stop because this is oil based. Okay, same thing with the crayon. All right, and I could match that on the other side. The same color I used on one side, I could use on the other to make it look balanced, right? 
circular motions with your brush gets that color in really nice, especially depending on the paper. I'm using not very good quality paper right now. Um, thinner paper, not watercolor paint paper, because um, I want it to be similar to what you guys are using um, in the with the school supplies, okay? So if you have really expensive watercolor paper, this will be a little different when you go to blend it. It will look a little different. All right, so then you can keep going and paint all the way up to the top, paint down at the bottom. Again, you can add details and draw it in. I can't wait to have you in class and go over this fully in class, but at least you'll have an idea of what our lesson's about. See you soon, guys.